Welcome to another segment of Provocative Conversations destined to provoke further thought and spark greater questions regarding God, church, and the religious establishments of both the past and the present. I am the proud heretic, Mr. Provocateur himself. And we are continuing on in our subtopic regarding the prophetic utterances that God gave me in reference to the church. Continuing on from the date of June the 3rd, a hefty, heavy day of revelation that I received on that day. I remember that day very clearly, very vividly. That entire day was spent dealing with this. And even into the night, literally the entire day, God says to me, notice how the White House was not protected or exempt from its exposure to the coronavirus. Notice how the White House was not protected or exempt from its exposure to the coronavirus. He says, notice how the White House was affected by cases of the coronavirus as well. Now, this was back in June that God spoke this to me, June the 3rd. At that time, sometime prior to that, I'm not sure how much time prior to June the 3rd, but the White House had a few positive tests that we were made aware of. However, now that we're here in October, we all know that since then, there was the White House became a super spreader <laughs> of sort, where the White House, many members of the White House, Trump, his wife, his son, Chris Christie, Kellyanne Conway, Kelly or whatever her name, the his press secretary or whatever she is, and multiple other people, even pastors who attended, and even John Hagee. Hey, John, just had to give a shout out to you. You and all your hateful rhetoric, and now your son is kind of like just mimicking your messages. Sad, sad thing, sad thing, sad thing. Anyway, I'm not concerned about you all because your days are ending. But God says, notice how the White House was not protected or exempt from its exposure to the coronavirus. Well, people, if the White House wasn't protected or exempt and the White House is the White House, how do you think the church house is going to be protected from it? <laughs> Come on, people. Or your house. Well, my house, we covered in the blood. The blood of what? The blood of what? Tell that to the bishops who are now dead. Tell that to the pastors who are now dead. Tell that to all these church members who are now dead. We just covered under the blood. Tell that to John Hagen. Tell that to Donald Trump. His wife. Tell that to Chris Christie. Tell that to these other pastors. <laughs> anyway, notice how the White House was affected by the cases of the coronavirus as well. Yes, I noticed it, God. Notice how the coronavirus infiltrated even the tight security of the White House. Yes, I realized that, God, with all of that security, somehow the coronavirus infiltrated even the White House. God goes on to say, notice who the White House continues to gather with. Yes, God, I do notice who the church, God. The White House keep gathering with the church house. The church house keep gathering with the White House. Hmm. And then the church house is the one who has the virus spiritually and physically. And whoever the church comes into contact with, they receive the viral infection or infections of the carrier, the church. Notice 
who the White House continues to gather with. Notice how the White House continues to call upon and meet with the elite members of the church. The elite members of the church, you will see them. You will see them, the, the Paula Whites, the Kenneth Copelands, the Rodriguez's, the John Hagees, the Jentons and Franklins, you, you, the Franklin Grahams, and all of these other people. You will see them all. You will see them all. It says, notice how the White House continues to call upon and meet with the elite members of the church. Mm-hmm. Notice that the very ones who have infiltrated and infected the world with its spiritual viruses are now in intimate contact with those within the White House. Okay, the church is spreading its virus throughout the world. It's infiltrated and infected the world. Now the church has moved into the White House and now it's infecting those within the White House now. Now, I know some of you say that. Yeah, 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 just be quiet and listen. Notice how there is no social distancing between those within the church house and those within the White House. There is no wonder. And if your church is social distancing, all right, okay, you are an exception to that piece, but you're still not an exception to the rebellion that you're doing by even being in the church house. It's rebellion. It's rebel hood. <laughs> church ain't nothing but a, a house full of hoods. Negroes from the hood. <laughs> You know, anyway, there is no wonder as to why the White House has now been infected by the viruses of the church house as well. The White House has now been infected by the viruses of the church as well. Yes, it has. For the White House is assembling itself with the very carriers of the viruses that are plaguing the societies of this world. The White House is assembling itself with the very carriers, the church, of the viruses that are plaguing the societies of this world. Remember, it's the viruses of the church that are infiltrating the viruses of our societies. It's not that the viruses of our societies has entered into the church and has created a viral spread. No, it's the viruses of the church which came first before the systems. The viruses of the church that's creating the viruses of the community or throughout our communities because the members of the church go back into our communities to work, sleep, eat, and drink, and they're bringing it back out there with them. The White House has become the church house. Whoa. The White House has become the church house. It, that's a good thing. <laughs> the hell it is. <laughs> Why do you think God is ending and closing the doors of the church house? The White House has become the church house. <laughs> The spiritual condition of the White House resembles the spiritual condition of the church house. Now, that's the truth. They both lie. They both cheat. They both deceptive. They both kill who don't, they don't like, who don't talk like them, who don't act like them. Neither one can be trusted. They both sleep around. They're both about gouging and getting money. They're, they're both about massing up as many followers as they can. Why? One, in order that they might be able to boast about the, the size of their crowd. And then two, that they might be able to get as much money as possible out of you in order to pay for the things that are necessary or the things that are desired. It's for personal greed, but it's covered up by saying we're doing this for the world. We're doing this for the United States. We're doing this for the communities. The White House, God says, mirrors that of the church house the white house mirrors that of the church house yes it does the white house does mirror the church house 
the White House mirrors that of the church house. You look at the White House, you look at the church house, they look the same. Both the White House and the church house are one in the same. I used to think the church house was copying from the White House. First lady and all of this here and let us all rise. And here comes the judge. Here comes the president. Let us all. No, God says the White House is mimicking that of the church house. Both the White House and the church house are one in the same. God says the White House is the mirrored image of the church house. He says the eels of the White House are the eels of the church house. Wow. He says what is plaguing the White House is what is plaguing the church house. Racism, greed, power, authority, lies, deceit. <laughs> uh, tricking of all sorts. Underhanded schemers, connivers, bribers, people with no integrity, no character, no principles, no morals. What is plaguing the White House is what is plaguing the church house. What is infecting the White House is what is infecting the church house. God says the White House has been infested with members of of the church house. Yes, the white house has, there are more members of the church house in the white house today than perhaps ever before. The white house has been infested with members of the church house. The white house has been infested with the very rodents of the church house. <laughs> the rodents of the church house have moved in and taken over the influence of the white house. Wow, the church house has moved into the White House and has overtaken the influence of the White House. Uh -huh. You're no longer seeing the White House on display. You're seeing the church house within the White House on display. God says both the White House and the church house have lost their willingness to address the viruses of this nation. Both the White House and the Church House have lost their willingness to address the viruses of this nation and world. Notice how Trump don't want to address the virus and then notice how the church doesn't do it either. Both refuse to address the deaths, the sickness, the wrong of the matter regarding the virus. The church projects the reason why Donald Trump is where he is at because of the Democrats. And then the White House tends to project what is occurring upon China, China. <laughs> Both the White House and the church house have refused to confront the social issues of this world. Both the White House and the church house have lost their influence towards social change. Yes, they have. Neither the White House nor the church house has the ability to influence towards social change. Neither one wants to stand up against injustice or inequality. Neither one wants to stand up against the white supremacists and the militia groups and Yet at the same time, they both stand up, both the church and the White House stand up against so-called Antifa, not QAnon, but Antifa. Neither one deals with the white groups that storm city halls and all with guns and all, but they do deal with people storming the streets and protesting. And what? God says the potency of the church. Well, let me see. Let me go. Let me go up one. Both the White House and the church house have lost their influence towards social change. Both the White House and the church house have been overtaken and have lost their social influence. Yes, they have. Both the White House and the church house have lost their ability to influence the world toward change. 
He says the relevancy of the church is its potency of producing change. The relevancy of the church. What makes the church relevant is its potency to produce change. And without its potency to produce change, the church has no relevance. Well, that's why the church is irrelevant right now. Why? Because they have no potency to produce the change that is necessary. The potency of the church would be its ability and willingness to promote change. And since the church is not promoting change, it's clear because the church is against the protests, it's against the marches, it's against Black Lives Matter, it's against all the things that God is using and sparking to bring forth change. For the potency of the church is within its ability and its willingness to bring forth change. Without its willingness or potency to bring forth change throughout society, the church has no relevance. Church, you have lost your relevance. God says the structures of this world are based within the structured beliefs of the church. The structures of this world are based within the structured beliefs of the church. The structured systems of this world are founded upon a flawed foundation. The structured systems of this world All the world systems are founded upon a flawed foundation. The structures of the world are based within the structured beliefs of the church. It's how the church believes is how the structures of the world were formed because they're based upon the belief structure or the structured beliefs of the church. The structured systems of this world are founded upon a flawed foundation. Church structure is broken structure. Church structure is broken structure. The structural issues of our societies are the result of the structured issues of our society. One broken structure cannot address and fix the broken structure of another. If you are a broken structure, how are you going to somehow come forth and bring, bring structure to another portion or another system that is broken? No, you're not structured yourself. The church is not structured itself. No wonder it can't answer what we need. One broken structure cannot address and fix the broken structure of another, which is why it is impossible for the church to remain or maintain relevance. Why? Because the relevance that you possess is your ability to bring change to a thing. If you cannot bring change to a thing, it is impossible for you to fix anything that is broken or to maintain relevance. Church structure cannot heal the world's structures. The church's structure was not designed to deal with the structural issues of our society. The church structure cannot heal the world's issues. The church structure was not designed to deal with the structural issues of our societies. Because remember, God didn't necessarily form the church. The church formed it in there and through there and by their own beliefs. The structured systems within our societies were designed based upon the broken structural system of the church. Anyway, let me go back through that again. The structured systems within our societies were designed based upon the broken structural systems of the church. The church had a struck a broken structured system. And because it did, the church permeated that broken structured system throughout all the systems. And now all the systems of the world mimic the church. It is impossible for the church to maintain its relevance. 
Church structure cannot heal the world's issues. Church structure was not designed to deal with the structural issues of our societies. The structured systems within our societies were designed based upon the broken structural systems of the church. Again, the relevancy of the church is in its ability to influence, in its ability to bring about change. Without its ability to influence and bring about change, the church has no relevance. Without its ability to bring about change, the church has no influential ability to penetrate. Without the ability to penetrate, the church has no reachability or ability to reach those who it is trying to, who it needs to. Which is why the church is not reaching anybody. You don't have the ability. You don't have the reachability. Even though the church lost its relevant potency long ago, God says, the church has maintained its structural relevance for centuries. In other words, churches have built bigger houses, bigger buildings, and whatever else, but still you don't have the ability to influence And without that ability to penetrate or to influence, the church has no reachability, which is why the church is not reaching people. Even though the church lost its relevant potency long ago, the church has maintained its structural relevance for centuries. The church no longer has relevance. The potency of the structured church no longer exists. Sure, there is still light within the church, but the light of the church is no longer effective. The light that is within the church is no longer affecting. The darkness that surrounds the communities of our church houses has overshadowed the light, the little light there is within certain members of the church. In other words, the darkness that surrounds our communities in the hate, the resentment, the murder, the the jealousy, the racism, all of that. It says it has overshadowed the little light there is within certain members of the so-called church, which has caused those within the church houses within our communities to be ineffective in dealing with the social issues of race and racism. The little light there is within the church house is overpowered by the prevailing darkness of the church. (laughs) Their own ignorance, their own racism, their own race issues, their own religious issues, their own fleshly issues. The church is ineffective in dealing with the ills of this world. For the darkness that surrounds the church within the communities of the church is due to the darkness within the church. The very darkness that has invaded the church is the very darkness that invaded the world. The darkness that is within the church speaks of the darkness that is within the communities of the church house, including the darkness of racism God says, without influence, the church has no relevance. And without relevance, the church has no ability to bring about change. God says, the church has lost its appeal. The church is no longer appealing. The church has lost its significance. The church has lost its societal influence. People no longer see or sense the relevance of the church. People are no longer sensing the need of church. People are no longer willing to go into the close, closed society, the closed walls of beliefs that the church pushes. The church is fighting for the position that it no longer has relevancy to fulfill. The church is fighting for the position that it no longer holds. On July the 2nd, 2020, I received two messages. Here's the first of the two messages, but only in regard to the church. 
God says, this season that you are in is a woeful season and it's full of woes. It's a season that's bringing catastrophe and devastation. He says, don't get caught up on whether this is the end. Is this revelation? Is this where it comes? Is this Armageddon? God said, this is not the end. This is greater than what was written. He said, don't get caught up on the end of things. Don't get caught up on the so-called end of things. This is not the end of things. This is not where things will end. end, But this is where things will end. This is not where the world ends and go to heaven or hell. This is bringing things to an end in this season simply because things have expired. This is the season of divine expiration. The church is expiring. Just so many things are expiring. Things will come to an abrupt end during this season, even our religion. This is not where the end is, but they think this is where things end. He says, this season will put an end to many things. No longer will things continue to be as they have been. Many things that once were will no longer be. Many things that were once permitted will no longer be permitted to do. Listen, there was a time where we were permitted to go to church and gather and do all these things not permitted to do. No longer will people permit what they once permitted. God says people have grown weary. They've grown weary in letting things be as they were. People are awakening to the truth. They're awakening to the truth of what it's supposed to be. People's reality is dawning on them. People are awakening to their own reality. People are awakening to the truth of how things are supposed to be. God says this is a season where people's eyes will be open. A season where people will begin to see clearly. And hearing in this season is important as well. And that's why God says this is a season full of hearing. A season filled with hearing. The need to hear during this season will drive the people. This season is filled with people's needs for hearing. People will be driven to hear. People will have strong need to hear throughout this season. Currently, God says, The world is not hearing. Currently, the world is not trying to hear. Currently, the world is not wanting to hear. The people will come to a point in this season where their desire to hear will be great. This season will create a desire to hear. The substance of truth will be of great demand. Those who have the truth will be of great demand. He says the days of little or no substance will no longer be accepted. People will no longer accept the days where all you do is give them a little of nothing. People will no longer feed upon things that are of no substance. This season will place a demand on people's substance, on people to deliver substance. Do you hear that, church? Substance will be demanded of those who speak during this season. For the people will no longer settle Substance will be a requirement during the season. Those who speak during this season must come forth with substance. God says this season will uncover the secret ones, the hidden ones. Again, those who were once silent, they'll begin to speak. They'll begin to speak forth what they've heard. They'll been, begin to speak forth words that will flow from within them. The speakers of this season will flow with revelation from within them, from within their spirit, revelation that is being poured out in them. Their words, those who are to speak in this season, their words will be words that are being spoken forth from within them. Their words will contain substance. Their words will produce substance. Their words will produce life-altering substance. God says, I am uprooting the systems of this world. The systems of this world are being uprooted. I am uprooting the systems of this world that have wreaked 
havoc in the lives of people. Church is one of those systems. Religion and church has hurt so many people. God says, I'm uprooting the systems that have enslaved the people. I am removing every system that is not working for the good of the people. He says, I am dismantling every system that is not for the people. God says, the people have continued to demand the ways of old. The church just keeps pounding and demanding. Let us go back to what we came from. Let us do what we've always done. Send us back into the dispensation we just left out of. We want to go back to Egypt, Moses, because at least in Egypt, (laughs) He says the people are continuing to put forth effort to continue as they were. The people are not wanting to change. People are not interested in the change that I am bringing. This is what God says. The people have persisted in their ways. They are not wanting the change that I am bringing. But it really does not matter, he says. The normal that was will never be. God says what we consider normal will never be. Things will never return to normal. Things will never be normal. Things will never get back to normal. No one will return to the normal that used to be. No one will go back to business as usual (laughs) the days of business as usual are clearly over God says it really does not matter what the people think it really does not matter what the people believe what the people think and believe does not change what will be Hmm. the people's opinion will not affect what will be What will be is going to be whether the people accept it or not. God says what I have purpose to be, regardless of what the church has to say about it, is still coming about the way that I stated it, whether they want it or not. So it really doesn't matter. God says humility is going to be required in this season. Humility is a must for this season and He said humility is going to be an important aspect of this season. It's a must. It is going to get you through this season, your humility. Without humility, you will lose it in this season. Your humility is a must. He said people who humble themselves, they will be preserved. People who submit to the movement of this season will do good. Listen to that. People who submit to the rulings of this season will fare well. But those who rebel against this season will not recover from this season. Those who rebel against the flow will be trampled by the flow. And the church is rebelling against the flow and they're being trampled by the flow. There will be many who will go against the flow, the church, against the flow of this season and they'll never recover. Those who snark at the flow, mock at, laugh at the flow of this season, where things are going, will succumb to the flow. There will be many who will succumb to the flow of this season. He says your recovery in this season is in going with the flow of this season. Going with the flow of this season assures your recovery from this season. And that's why I want to find myself going with the flow of this season so that I can have a complete recovery process in the shortest amount of time. God says on July the 2nd, I told you that he spoke to me twice. This is from the second time that he spoke to me regarding the church. He says the church is continuing to do the things that has gotten them to this point, (laughs) which is really no point. He says the church is continuing to go along the path that will lead to their destruction. He says the church is already returning to their places of worship. Yep. The church has already begun to return to their places of vomiting. 
The church is returning to the places where they last vomited. In other words, he said, the church is like a dog. It keeps going back to its previous place of vomit. It keeps wanting to go back to where it vomited last. God says the church is going back to its own vomit. The church is returning to its own vomit. The church is returning to its own regurgitated vomit. By the church, keep running to go back into the church house. Keep running to go back into the dispensation that God graduated them from or brought them out of. The church has returned to its own regurgitated vomit. He says, but the regurgitated state of the church will not be. <laughs> the church will not continue in its regurgitated state. The church will not continue to feed upon its own gurgitation, nor will it continue to feed others from its regurgitations. Now, remember, when you return back to the things of old, when you return back to the things that God has delivered you from, when you keep turning back to your traditions, he said the church has returned to its own regurgitated state. Now that we see the pandemic initially start looking better, People began to throw aside caution, stop listening to the doctors, go back into the church house, open the church doors up and start all that mess again. He says, but the regurgitated state of the church will not be. You will not stay in your regurgitated state, church. You got to go. The church will not continue to feed upon its own regurgitation. When you go back into the church house, all you're doing is being regurgitated. You're eating regurgitated food. And you just keep regurgitating and eating the same thing, same thing, same thing, same thing. Same thing. <sighs> Nor will it continue to feed others from its regurgitations. God's going to put a halt to all of that. He said, this is not the revival of the church. In the church world, people keep saying, ah, the great revival. The great God said, this is not the revival of the church. The church is not in a stage of being revived. <laughs> the church is being dismantled. This season is not for the survival or the revival of the church. This is not the church's revival. He says there will be some in the church who will revive, but this is not about the church's revival. This is not about the church to be received. There will be some in the church who will revive, but this is not about the church's revival. He said, this is not so that the church will revive all that's going on this pandemic season. He said, this is not so that the church will be revived because the church is not to be revived. He says, the church is not to be brought back. People who are claiming the church's revival are being misled. People who are claiming the church's return are misleading. There will be no resurgence of the church, God says. Wow. The church will not resurge. The church will not return in its original state. The original state of the church will be no longer. The church will not see a return to its numeric proportions. There will not be a great inflow of the church. Again, that's what they're saying, a great inflow or whatever they're saying. The church, that is. There will not be a great inflow of the church. He says the church will not see a great inflow. This is not about the church reviving and great inflow of people. Or this is not about this pandemic season. It's not about the church receiving a great inflow of people. The church will instead see a great outflow of people. This is not about inflow. This is about outflow. Oh, that won't be going back into the church. The church will see an outflow of unprecedented numbers. The people will refuse to return to the church. Whoa. The people will refuse to hear the church. The people will not hear what the church is saying. Wow. 
But these religious heads are going to keep on teaching and preaching. And uh, <laughs> let me say it again. The people will not hear what the church is saying. He says people will lose their appetite for the cravings that they formed from the church, that they have from the church. Those appetites that people have, those cravings, that's what we're seeing, the appetites and cravings of the people. They're drug fiends. They're drug fiends. They're shaking. They're shimmering. They need a fix. Just get me into the church house and go back to what I was always doing. People will lose their appetite for the cravings they have for the church. People will no longer feed on the regurgitations of the church. People will no longer crave for the regurgitations of the church. No longer will the church feed the people's cravings, fleshly cravings. God says the cravings of the people will be greater than what the church can deliver. It won't be about that stuff we were craving for at one time before. The church will fail to deliver on the cravings of the people. Church isn't going to be able to give it to them, though. The church will not succeed in delivering to the cravings of the people. The church wants to feed you what it make you happy and bring more money and more circulation of greed. They want that, but but they can't find a way to do it because the doors are closed and God is the one doing it. And then God goes on to say there will be a great exposure within the church. And that's why you have me sitting here right now. Why? Because God is using me to bring forth a certain degree of that great exposure of church leaders (laughs) within the church. He says the exposure of the church will be great. He said the systems of the church will be exposed, and it is. There will be a great exposure of church leaders. Wow. The highest levels of church leaders will be exposed. What are you coming out with, God? The exposure within the church will reach the highest levels. Wow. The Entity of the church itself is corrupt to its core. He says the entity of the church itself is corrupt. The church is corrupt to its very core. The church has always been corrupted. The church has always been a place of corruption. Wow. He says the corruption of the church is not a new conception but rather the church's corruption has always been. He says the corruption of the church is nothing new. The origin of the church itself is of a corrupt nature. He says the basic foundational layers of the church, church's foundation are of a corrupted nature. He says the corruption of the church is only being brought forth. The church's corruption is merely being exposed. People are merely being exposed for who they are, for who they truly are. God says you will see a great number of people within the church who will become sickened by the disease of the viruses and the diseases of the virus. And we see that and will so succumb to the diseases of the diseases of the virus. He says people in the church, they'll become sick by it. And some will even even succumb to the virus itself. You we see all of that. You you will see this begin to occur. Greater numbers of people will fade away. And I think we're getting ready to go into another phase of this fading away. And these people dying. We're getting ready to go into such a, you know, we're in it, but we're getting ready to see it manifest itself. Just great, great, great numbers of people dying. If what God stated to me is exact in what I heard. <sighs> You will see this all begin to occur. Greater numbers of people within the church will fade away because of their return to their own vomit. And I have certain links here to show that as well 
what God stated here is true and happening, but I won't do it right now. God says there must be a distinction, and that's what God is doing during this pandemic season. He's drawing a distinction between what is right and what is less than right. A distinct distinction between the wheat and the tear. God is making so many distinctions in all of this here. He says there must be a distinction made between those who live in in accordance with the virus and those who do not. In other words, a distinction between people who are listening and adhering to the virus and adhering to the authorities, those who live in accordance with the virus and those who do not. One of the distinctions that's going to be made is that those who live in accordance with the virus, in accordance with the CDC, in accordance with the direction that the flow is taking us, the shift, the shifting, the current is taking us, is they'll live. (laughs) They won't be sick. For the most part, they won't be sick. There must be a distinction between those who listen to the advice of the medical authorities and those who do not. A distinction must be clearly set and seen by the people. The distinction will be clearly recognized. If you look at it now, when you look at the people who went against the virus, who didn't believe the virus, who fought against it, who said it's a hoax and it's a democratic whatever, whatever, most of those people have gotten bitten by the virus now. (laughs) He says people will have great consequences to their actions during this season. In other words, when you do certain things, the return on that seed of doing is going to be fast. He says the consequences that people will suffer due to their own activity and even their inactivity during this season will be great. Those who go with the flow of this season will get through this season. Those who adhere to the advice of this season will be spared in this season. But those who continue to do what they are so pleased to do during this season will see devastating consequences. Well, here we are on July the 3rd. I'm not on fire, but we're still talking and I'm still giving you what God stated. It's a lot of information. This message that I'm getting ready to speak on from July the 3rd of 2020, I'm only going to, again, pull out the things that God talked to me. But this message here resulted from the subtle, subtle rejection that I had been having at that time or receiving from that time from nearly everyone that I was attempting to express in brief what God is doing in this pandemic season. No matter who I attempted to tell regarding what is occurring, those individuals simply rejected my words from every angle and on every level. Those individuals had no regard for what I was saying to them in relation to what God had been saying to me regarding this season, which disturbed me greatly, more so in a sad way, though. I was saddened and disturbed by several observed things. One, people's blindness to what is going on, their deafness to the voice of God, their hardness toward the actual workings of God, their adamant stance within their religious views, and their level, pride, arrogance, and rebellion in general. God said to me, do not take it to heart when the people begin to defend the church. One thing you all will see, you will see the church being defended heavily because people feel that they have to defend an entity that they have no power or authority over. They're defending an entity that they have no revelation regarding. They're defending an entity that they're wanting to be spared. But God is not sparing in this hour. 
Do not take it to heart when people begin to defend the church. He says, do not get upset at the people's defense. He said, the people's defense is due to their dullness of hearing, their ignorance, and their fear. They are fearing what they are hearing, what they are seeing, and what they are sensing. He says the church is continuing to do what the church has continued to do, which is continue on as usual, doing the same old traditional redundant things of old. The church has not changed its course. The church has not examined itself. The church has not self-examined itself. He said the church is still not hearing. The church is not hearing what is still not hearing what is going on. The church has not positioned itself to hear what is being said. He says the church is still failing to see. The church is still failing to see what is clearly going on in front of them. He says the church is still failing to see what is happening right before them. The church still doesn't see the hand of God, the move of God, the presence of God, the sovereignty of God at play. He says the church simply will not see what is so clear to see. The church's visual sight is still where it has always been. The church is still not positioning themselves to hear what is being spoken regarding this season. He says, I am in the process of dismantling people and they don't even realize it. I am dismantling the body of the people, body, the body of Christ. I am dismantling the church's body. And they don't even realize it. I am dismantling the body of the church. I am dismantling the religion of the church's body. And they don't even recognize it. He says, I am tearing down the religious thoughts of the church bodily. I am tearing down the systematic thinking of the church bodily. I am tearing down the religious systematic behavior of the church bodily. He says elitism is being stripped. Huh. Elitism will be completely stripped within the church bodily. I am tearing down the elitism of the church I am dismantling elitism within the church and we don't realize it. He says, when I am speaking of the church, I am speaking of the people. I am speaking of the people who are bent on being the church. He says, I am speaking to the people who are systematized to the church. I am speaking about people who have become systematized by the systems of the church. <laughs> he says, when I'm speaking of the church, I'm speaking of the people who have a systematic approach to me. Those who have a systematic approach when it comes to them dealing with me. <laughs> God says, what I am talking about when I'm talking about the church, I'm talking about those who have been lost in their approach. I am talking about those who have been misled in their approach. He says, the church still feels as though it is exempt from the events of this season, and they do. They still believe this. The church still feels as though it is standing outside of the events of this season as though it is. The church has some form of exemption status. The church does not have any form of exemption status as it relates to this coronavirus experience, this pandemic experience. He says that and all that is occurring within this pandemic experience, 
during this time period of the church does not have any form of exemption status. The church is not exempt from the events of this season. The church is not exempt from the occurrences of this season. The church will not be able to speak its way out of the events of this season. He says, in fact, the church will play an intricate role in the events of this season. He says the church will become intricately acquainted with the woes of this season. Church, you will become intimately acquainted with the woes of this season. So not only are you not exempt, but you're probably going to be dealt with, no, no, probably be dealt with harsher. <laughs> The church will be intricately acquainted with the woes of this season. The church will be included in the woes of this season. Those within the church will share in the woes of this season. He says the people are dull of hearing the church because the preachers are dull of their hearing. He said the people are dull of hearing because the preachers are dull of hearing. He said the people's dullness of hearing is due to the preacher's dullness of hearing. The people couldn't hear what was going on because the preachers couldn't hear what was going on. The preachers couldn't see what was going on because the preachers couldn't see what was going on. The people still have no idea of what is going on because the preachers still have no idea of what is going on. He says the preachers are the reason for the condition of the people. It is the preachers of the church who are the main ones dull in their hearing. Because the preachers are unable to hear, the people are unable to hear. The people's inability to hear is due to the preacher's inability to hear. The people's unwillingness to hear is due to the preacher's unwillingness to hear. On the next one, since we're going into July the 25th, we'll stop here in order to begin another recording. I know this is a lot, and I know that this recording and the previous recording were, were elongated in the sense that I did a lot of reading. I had to give you a lot of things that God stated to me. So instead of me adding a lot of talk to it, I just was given for the most part, the exact words that God gave me, I shared them with you. I never know how I'm going to bring this stuff forth. I just cut on the recorder and I begin to talk. I begin to talk into my mic and it is what it is. Sometimes it will be elongated, but if you would just listen to it and glean as much as you can from it, you will be better equipped better prepared to deal with the matters that are at hand right now. It is important that you hear these things. It's tiring to me to do these things. It's, it's tiring at times, at points, especially if I wrestled throughout the night. Last night, I wrestled. I wrestled with many things personally. Well, when you do that, it tires you out. For the next day, it's compiled upon all that you have to do in that next day, especially if you didn't get your sleep out. My sleep was highly interrupted, even though I may feel the way that I feel physically. It doesn't matter. I still press through in order to get this to you. Because I'm wanting to put this stuff up before November the 3rd. Will I be able to do it? I'm not sure. I mean, we're only talking maybe 17 days from now. That's a lot of stuff I have to edit in order to get it out there. I'm not sure, but I'm going to do my darndest. So anyway, I thank you for hearing Thank you for hanging in there. We'll get to better days on the next one. Thank you.